My name is Wesley Littlefield with YourBassGuy.com, and today we're talking how to rig your spoons correctly. Stay tuned. Before I dive too deep into today's video, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to have several spoons in the description below and swivels so that you are buying the correct product. So if the, all this fishing knowledge is new to you and crazy terms that you don't understand like swivels and split rings and treble hooks and single hooks and all this stuff, I'm going to have it listed in the description so you can just click down and order what you need. Spoons are a relatively simple lure that catches a wide variety of fish. I've used them for bass fishing, trout fishing, and uh, northern pike hit them. I mean, there's virtually any uh, predator fish is going to attack them because they just look like a bait fish. But there is a wrong way to actually rig it, and that's what a lot of people do. And the primary thing is they don't put a swivel. You can see here that this swivel will save you from line twist and huge backlash or a bird's nest on your reel. It's, it's a game changer. If you don't put a swivel on, and it doesn't have to be a swivel like this, it can be the regular barrel swivels where it's just the swivel part. It really doesn't matter. If you don't put those on there though, you will see a difference. Now a huge disclaimer before we really get into it, swivels work with monofilament and with fluorocarbon. They don't work with braid because braid is actually too malleable. It The braid will start twisting before it causes the swivel to twist so your line is going to get twisted up anyway if you're fishing with braid. If you decide to fish with braid you must use a leader. Tie your leader onto the braid and then tie the mono or the fluorocarbon onto the swivel. Otherwise, your line's just gonna twist and twist and twist and it's not gonna be any good. So if you plan on using braided line, be sure to at least try it with the leader and you'll get better results than you would just going straight braid. On to how to rig it. So as you can see here, I really rigged this one pretty simply. I just put a swivel on the front and this is just like a, uh, oh, I call them a clip-on swivel, but they've got a proper name that I can't think of right now. But you can also put a split ring onto the nose here and then put a barrel swivel. That's basically just this part. And you can put that onto the split ring and use that part. And we'll grab another one. That's like this one. You can see here the split rings on it and then I've got the swivel actually attached to the split ring. That's one way you can rig it. Another way you can rig it is you can see here that there's another split ring at the bottom and I've got a treble hook on this one. A lot of people, especially trout fishermen, even saltwater fishermen, they, they like to throw just a single hook because treble hooks are notorious for getting hung up on anything and everything. So they'll throw a single hook, and I don't actually have a single hook here, but a single hook like this spoon, except it's on this rig instead of the treble hook. And that just helps with not hurting the fish, not hooking the fish as many times, not getting hung up as often. Um, you name it, it, a single hook will help. Now, it also might, air quotes, cut down on your hookup ratio. That's kind of debatable because if a fish is gonna hit this, they're gonna hit it and you should be able to catch them with a single hook. Going to choose your spoon, that's a broader subject. As you can see here, there are all kinds of different patterns, all kinds of different sizes. There's different styles. You've got like this one. You can see here that there's a dip in this one and it just makes it move a little bit different in the water where this one's actually relatively flat it is a little bit concave but for the most part it's flat and so these two spoons will act very differently not to mention 
they're two totally different sizes. Rating them is all going to be the same. You're going to want the split ring up top and you're going to want the swivels. Here's a couple other different kind of spoons. See these are really thin where this one here is like a lot wider. Different brands, you name it. Different paint jobs. You've got gold ones, you've got red and white ones. I've got chartreuse, yellow, red. I mean like dark greens, natural colors, it just anything you can think of. And that's going to depend on the day and what the fish want. So if you are looking to catch a lot of fish, you might have to switch between three or four different spoons on that day. The best place to use spoons is anywhere. <laughs> anywhere there's bait fish, you know. Uh, like I said, I've used them for trolling out in the middle of the lake up and down the river. I've used them casting down below dams and bouncing them down the rocks. There's really not a bad place to use them. Now, if you're using a treble hook and you're throwing it into grass and weeds and stuff, that's less than ideal. If you're using a single hook, you might be able to get away with it every now and then, but you're still gonna get hung up. So the one place I would suggest looking for something else is if you're throwing into the weeds. Now, if you're fishing along the edge of the weeds, that's a different story but actually throwing into the weeds and into moss, they're not gonna do so great. Other than that, um, in brush too, with the exposed treble hooks, they're not gonna do very good there. But if it's like open water or rocky, those are excellent spots. Along, alongside the brush maybe, or alongside the grass, great spots. Just don't get too deep. With that said, let's move on to actually how to use a spoon. Using a spoon is, like I said, I mentioned before, it, it's a great beginner lure. It's very simple to use because it's uh, you cast it out there and you reel it back. Now, there is a little bit of nuance to it. Casting out there and reeling it back ain't getting you a bit. Then tr maybe try casting out there, let it sink a little bit, and twitching it as you're reeling it to give it a more chaotic action and it looks like a dying fish or a darting fish trying to avoid other predators. And so it might trigger a bite that way. But I use spoons a lot when trolling, especially in Michigan where I go fishing. So up northern states, I use a lot of spoons trolling and I've caught bass on them, smallmouth bass. I've caught walleye. I've caught northern pike, maybe like a rock bass. Even down here in Oklahoma where I'm from, I use them and we catch white bass, hybrids on them. We catch catfish believe it or not um, sometimes largemouth but it's a really versatile lure so don't be afraid to throw it out there and see what bites as I mentioned earlier you know it it's attractive to a wide variety of predator fish simply because it looks like a bait fish it's very natural looking and fish absolutely love it when the bite is tough and you've got a lot of bait fish around try throwing a spoon who knows you might catch a pb and it might be a great day it doesn't hurt to try that's really it for spoons they're a super simple lure to use excellent for beginners and they're really not all that expensive when you go and just buy a few you know especially like a crankbait or something they're a lot cheaper than buying a crankbait and they catch fish what else can i say thank you guys for watching if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Share it with your friends. I know you want to keep all your fishing secrets, but fishing's a lot more fun together. So share this with your friends. And remember, education is important, but fishing, that's essential.